I'm David Darcy. I am a film critic. I write for Screen International and other publications. I'm an art critic and I worked for National Public Radio for many years. I now work as a commentator for the BBC. I met Peter Brunette in Berlin and as many of you know when you meet Peter he tells you all about himself. He wants you and, when, and so it's a little confusing when, he's, when you first meet him because you think, God, this guy's telling me everything. What's his problem? Well, it wasn't really a problem. That's Peter's way of getting you to like him. It was very, very important for Peter to be liked. But when you and Peter liked each other, he was a very loyal friend. Now, the other thing that Peter really liked was food. And I used to kid around because I would meet him either drinking or eating initially. And I always used to introduce him as my friend Peter Brunette, who's covering this festival for Gourmet Magazine. So be careful. Don't get between Peter and a buffet table. Now that's a joke. And Peter, what was great about Peter is that he enjoyed hearing this sort of thing. But once you got to know Peter beyond all this kind of nonsense that I'm talking about, oh yes, he also liked to speak foreign languages. But the way that Peter spoke foreign languages was he spoke about 10 times as loud in foreign languages as he spoke in English. Again, this was an endearing thing once you got to know Peter. It would be really annoying at first, but it was part of Peter's personality because he was ultimately a very, very generous guy. And I think all of you who know him will recognize that. Peter was a collegial person. He helped me out. He got me reviewing gigs at film.com when that had money. He introduced me to the people at Screen International after I'd had this terrible experience getting fired from National Public Radio. He was a very good friend about that. And Peter also introduced me to people at the University of Mississippi for whom I'm writing a book now. So I, I'll always remember him on a personal level for that kind of generosity. But I'll also remember Peter because unlike so many people who are film critics and in the film, in the film world, Peter was interested in other kinds of media. He loved art. His wife Lynn was an art historian. But Peter, Peter, Peter knew a lot about art. He loved looking at it and I could talk to him about that. And, and unlike conversations that would be great that you'd have with other film critics, which were very much you know, focused on film and history and, and things like that, you could really get into a larger world of images with Peter, which, was, which I, thought, I found very, very satisfying. And I miss that very much. Now, Peter, when he met me, um, this was when you know, I was more of a carouser, not the very serious person that I am today. I used to talk to him about getting shit-faced at film festivals. And it became short, and, and you know, it was as if he'd never heard the expression before, which was odd because Peter was such an erudite guy from, from you know, the high art to the low. And he always talked, and then I'd say, let's just get faced. We'd go to a party. Of course, everything was free. Um, Peter special, and I both specialize in, uh, as many journalists do, in free food. And we talked about getting faced all the time. And this is something he would always bring up, constantly. And, and I have to say, I mean, I'll miss a lot of things about Peter, particularly his generosity. But just sitting around with him, drinking beer, and when, you drink, when it's free, you tend to drink a lot of it and, and really have a good time. So I hope all of you who hear this, I, I'm sitting in a hotel room in Toronto now, where I used to spend a lot of time with Peter, but think about the fun, not just what you could learn from him, which was a lot and really satisfying and very important to you sincerely, all interested in film, but just the fun that he brought to life. And uh, that's something I'll miss very much.